Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Harbour Centre and delegates, for the opportunity to speak with you this afternoon. Uh, I'm also a fully certifiable self-practising nerdist, amongst other things. Um, per perennial learner. Uh, our friend seeing me off yesterday said, you'll feel quite at home at the Wacker." I thought, I've never been here before. But anyway, <laughs> um, following on from the, the speakers this morning, what a, what a great conference. Well done, Rob and Monica, for putting this together. Absolutely brilliant. Every speaker has built on and added to previous speakers. And I'm sitting here listening to all this thinking, how can I build on and add value to that? I don't want to repeat anything, but how can I add on and build? And there's, there's been three themes all day. The first one is integration. Second is time. Third is value. Three themes. And I think the best thing I can do to add to those three is to say, it's happening. And you're part of it. It's happening. Integration. Multidisciplinary approach. I'll get to my presentation in a minute, Rob. Um, <laughs> look around the room. It's happening. Timeline. Look where we were 20, 30 years ago. Look where we are now. Shelley's presentation. Look where we're going. Look around the room, it's, it's happening. Value. Um, a few speakers have spoken at value. A 15% discount rate is needed to justify not using permeable paving. So if you're not building your pavement for something less than about seven years, if you're looking at a longer term pavement, eight, nine, long term, rubbish. Most pavements are depreciated over 40 to 80 years. If you're not using permeable, perhaps you're ripping your community off, to put it bluntly. Value. So I'm going to try and present on those three components. Integrated approach, time and value. And on time, do I need the Here's one we prepared earlier in Adelaide, Frome Road. We weren't in lockdown, this is on Easter Monday um, back in last April. I thought I'd get out there when there's not much traffic blocking up the, the photographs. Frome Road was planted on Arbor Day back in 1902, 119 years ago. There's no asphalt. Simon, one for you. <laughs> Love it. Look at the drainage. There's no deep drainage. Probably no Telstra, definitely no fibre optic. Um, yeah, fashions have changed. Fortunately, no Lycra or Crash Hat back then. Um, yeah, 1902 planting. Now that road handles up to about 20,000 people, uh, 20,000 vehicles on an average day. It's dual lane, both directions. It's just north of North Terrace, Adelaide CBD runs down to the river. You can see a bit of a rise in the, the back up to the city of Adelaide. So it's as developed as you'll ever see. On the left hand side of Frome Road in that view, you've got the medical and the dental um, schools, Adelaide University Medical and Dental School. In the semi distance, on the left hand side you've got the old RAH, we've just opened a new one. So major school and hospital. On the right hand side you've got the University of Adelaide and just further up the road past the University of Adelaide you've got UniSA City East campus. The, the reason I'm harping on about this is each one of those properties, the four of them in that block, has the utilities requirements of a small town. And most of them are delivered through this road, through, under and around the roots of trees that were planted in 1902. How is that possible? Think of time and value. How is it possible? I remember knocking off from lectures up the road there in the 80s and walking down the street and there were people hand trenching with a spade 
along the length of that street around the tree roots to replace a gas main because the leaking gas was harming the trees. Hundreds of metres of intricate work feeding new PVC pipes around under root systems. Tedious, incredibly expensive. There's only one reason that every bit of infrastructure in that street could have been built around and renewed through the growth of those trees. And that reason is we value those trees. They're a local icon. Anyone dared to touch those trees or compromise them, they'd be strung up. We value trees. That's paramount. <laughs> Same day, not far away, this is Hindley Street in Western Adelaide. Um, urban vegetation will hang it all. Um, <laughs> difficult to, to get a tree in there, what would you do? Uh, Western Adelaide, a little bit like the Wild West. Uh, 1890, where's Arbor Day when you need it, but anyway. Uh, wouldn't it be lovely to take out some of that carriageway, literally carriageway, no asphalt, you don't have to dig it up, but wouldn't it have been great just to, to put in some soil, a continuous tree trench. You see this This hatching here, continuous tree trench right the way through. Um, but then you'd lose the car parking space. But at least you could get some garden in there and, and some tree canopy. This isn't my work, by the way. I don't work for City of Adelaide. I work for a, another local SA council, day job, nine to five. Um, across the arboriculture and engineering teams. Um, this is City of Adelaide. Actually, this is shown in detail on the TreeNet website, the case studies portal that Glenn mentioned earlier. Uh, so if you want some more detail, you, you can just get on the TreeNet site and have a look. But the idea of a continuous root space, if we could define that and constrain, confine that and develop that, We've got a space where roots can grow that we can keep infrastructure out of, keep utilities out of. And as Rob said, we've then got a space that we can turn trees over for generations. But this is expensive. Where do we get the money for that? You, you saw the pictures of bland concrete jungle Hindley Street. Is it worth it? Frame Road's a no-brainer. It's there. You can't see what's here. But if Frome Road is worth those hundreds of thousands of dollars to intricately work around the roots, this is a much cheaper solution. Is it worth it? City of Adelaide work again. Um, footpath, this is a section of the continuous tree trench we saw. Under the footpath, some sort of support mechanism to take the loads. It can be done, the technology's there, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And in those car parking spaces, yeah, continuous tree trench under the car parking. It can be done. It, it's only money. Is it worth it? If it was to preserve existing trees, it'd be a no-brainer. To get those trees there in the first place, it, it should be a no-brainer. We should just do, do this. It's happening. And you're part of it. Make it happen. Um, so, so that's the plan. You can get the details off the TreeNet website. That's during construction. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of impact, it's a lot of mess. Is it worth it? You've seen the, the soil structural cells. It takes the load of the pavement, um, filled with loam. Key is it's not compacted. The life that lives in the space between the soil grains is what nourishes the trees. It's gotta be uncompacted soil. Surface, um, put the, the treatment over the top, fairly easy. <coughs> it's, it's really not difficult, it's not rocket science. And is it affordable? Well, if we're not doing it, we're, we're ripping our communities off. Works quite well. Um, gives you greater area on the, the verge. 
less area on the road, but eh, not too long we'll have driverless Ubers anyway, so we won't need parking, we, we won't care about having somewhere to stop, just jump out. <laughs> uh, and a few years after planting, uh, this is I think five years, five years after, four, four years after planting. Uh, imagine the, remember the, the first photo I showed you of Hindley Street, that's the, the eastern block, this is the western block of Hindley Street. Fantastic, this is in a few years, is it worth it? A little bit of our fresco, safer crossing the road, skin cancer, well just wait for the traffic under a tree, nice and cool, go for it, wonderful, absolutely brilliant. Uh, this is the University of South Australia's City West campus, Pridham Hall, graduations are held there. Many days a year there are thousands of people in this area. It becomes a plaza, you close the road off. Streets are just parks that accommodate traffic. They're, they're public open space. They don't all have to be freeways, we, we can do this. This is absolutely brilliant. Um, most days there are hundreds of students toing and froing through there. It's completely revitalised what used to be the wild west of Adelaide. I think having the police station move in nearby was, was a bit of a help to that as well. <laughs> um, on the TreeNet website you'll find symposium proceedings, uh, papers from the last 21 symposia. I think we've had 21, yeah. Uh, back in 2011, Robert Smart, um, landscape architect from Sydney, gave us a paper on the work he was doing in Victoria Avenue, Chatswood. So you can download the paper free from the, the TreeNet website. It's worth a look. Note the tram there, that's what, 1957. Again, where's Arbor Day when you need it? This is straight from Rob's work. Rob is director of Arterra. Um, I'm just the messenger today, so thank you very much for the invite. This is the easiest presentation I've ever given. But if you see the photograph on the left there, that was the Victoria Avenue Mall Mark 1. And the trees were installed business as usual in a small tree planting pit. You can see there they're really struggling a little bit there. Rob came up with a design to do it better. It's happening. This is 10 years ago. It's happening. You can see the, the rock breaker there. Actually, tram tracks just buried. Rob spoke about herbic soils with all the refuse. Huge lumps of concrete. The tree's got nowhere to go. So Rob came up with a design to have a continuous pit down the centre of the, the road there with a, a specific soil to get the tree roots established and different soils. One, two, three, four different soil mixes used in that job. I told him at the time, this is the best example I've ever seen of a pro, pro tree design for urban situation. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, but how do you maintain that much soil not compacted? You can use structural cells or you can put in reinforced concrete pillars. You can put in a 20-storey building on pillars like that, so you can have space for people to walk on and space for tree roots to grow. It's absolutely fantastic. Suspended pavement. That gives you room to move under the pavement. You can get water in, you can get air in, you've got room for root expansion. Absolutely brilliant. Worth downloading and having a look at that paper. When the trench was filled, agricultural drainage pipes take the runoff from the surface, feed it into the surface of the the soil. The surface is important. That's how nature does it. Nature's not stupid. Water infiltrates down. Tree roots need oxygen. They respire. They can't grow without it. Too much water's toxic. Once the water is infiltrated and the trees start to, to draw it out, they let air into the soil. So they're, they're not drains, they're aerators. They're, they're the dual purpose, multifunction, integration, big picture, value. Um, works really well. Tree planting pit, picks up the surface water, you can see some overflow drains. Yeah, you get the gist of it. Tree going in. 
and it probably looks very familiar to Rob. And looking pretty good. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. That was 2010 and 2011 the trees were planted. How does it look now? In terms of city scale, it's a fairly small tree. It's a Chinese elm, it's 10 years in ground. It's doing incredibly well. In terms of people scale, it is incredible that those trees are established, that they're still young, they're hardly gone for it. It's happening. Do it. Ah, wonderful, isn't it? Nature's air conditioners, shade. Yeah. What was a street with some 1950s cars and a tram is now a people space. Is it worth it? You ask all the shopkeepers there, is it worth it? Absolutely wonderful. Really good design. Many of you know how big a Chinese elm's going to get. Look at the span between those buildings, the span between the trees. They're still young. They're going to fill that. It's only going to get better. This was quite an expensive problem. It had a budget, uh, expensive project. It had a budget in the millions. Was it worth it? Too right it was. Lyndall phoned in earlier, unfortunately the technology wouldn't allow her to present, but this is one of her projects when she was running the urban forest team up in Brisbane for many years. Adelaide Street, not far from the mall. Uh, Lyndall was going to present on Albert Street, which crosses this one. How do you get large trees, full canopy, into a street that looked like my first shot of Hindley Street? You can't. There's no soil. There's no space. Lyndall constructed Continuous tree trenches, both sides. Broad, reasonable depth, you, you don't want to go too deep. Um, cantilever pavement, so there's clearance over the soil so you can get water and aeration. Was it expensive? Yeah. Was it good value? Twenty trees, I think, planted in that project this, this goes back over 20 years. They're all still there, haven't lost one. They're all still growing. Was it worth it? Ah. Guja Street, Adelaide. Um, East-West across the CBD. East-West streets are difficult. The north side, too much shade. Tall buildings, canyon. Lots of asphalt. What do you do with it? Create space for roots, broader than deep, somewhere where you don't need traffic running all the time. Structural cells, backfill with lime. This one's on the, the TreeNet website again, City of Adelaide. Uh, none of my work. So get on the TreeNet website, case studies portal, and have a look. Business as usual on the surface, nice median strip. You can plant some trees in it. Still got traffic through there. This is Chinatown, lots of people. So it's good to actually restrict the traffic flow. You can still get through, it doesn't hold you up. You can see the shade on the north side. Difficult to grow a tree. These Zilcovas in the centre, they're going to fill out and cover most of that canop most of that street. It's going to work well. You can put some bike racks in the middle there, get them out the way off the verge, open up more of the verge for the, the dining. Really good solutions. And it looks pretty good too. Glenn's presentation, he showed you the entrance to the, the TreeNet website portal with the Bank Street job. Bank Street's a really interesting narrow little section in the, the northern section. Imagine the politics about restricting traffic in an access way like that. With all the expense of a CBD situation and the underground services. Do they want to commit? They want to understand the community. One key that Lyndall gave us with her project in Queensland was the three Ps. People, people and people. It's not about trees. 
She said it's get the right team there with the right knowledge, the right researchers to feed in how, how it needs to happen. Get the right project team there, the next group of people, to digest that and get it into a plan that will work, like these ones that you've seen with Rob and with Lyndall. And the third one is get the community, the beneficiaries on side. If they can see the value up front, they, they won't hesitate to cover it. So people, 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 integration, value, time. You want to be pretty confident before you start something in the CBD. There's your services. <laughs> value, is it worth it? Do you want to open that can of worms? <laughs> it is worth it. Yes, you do want to open that can of worms. And you need to be confident it's very worth it before you do because it gets worse. Uh, Friend, good friend of mine, a plumber, he says, doctors and plumbers have got a lot in common. We've both saved millions of lives. Yeah, they have. Plumbing and sewage is a bit of a problem. And he, then he said, oh, we've got another similarity. We all bury our problems. <laughs> no, no, bur bury our mistakes, he said. Uh, this isn't planning. This is ad hoc. Someone's had to connect something from there to there and they've done it. I think we can plan better than this. What was it you said, Shelley? Well, we're not all silly, we can do this. Yeah. You're all, <laughs> it's your job, do it. We, we can do this. Anyway, this is Bank Street, which was a really narrow area where they weren't sure they wanted to commit because of the utilities. They actually built little sections like cafe booths out of steel and wood and put pot plants in and closed off part of the traffic to see how it worked and everyone loved it. So after a year of that, they decided to open up that pit and start to solve the problems. And even there, you can find space to establish a zone for tree roots. You can shift a utility from here to here. It costs, is, is it worth it? it? It'll give you a few grey hairs, but it might give you a bit of satisfaction. Yeah, it is worth it. These trees are still fairly young. This was oh, two years after it was built. I did my tour on Easter Monday and they've developed a bit since then. You can still get vehicles through there, it's one way. You can still get trucks, you can load, you can unload. You can still go about city business, but it's a, a people space. Wonderful. Is it worth it? You think 119 years ago, people planting plane trees in Frome Road, is it worth it? Yeah. I'm glad they planted them. What are people going to say about what we're doing in a few years? Should we have done it? Was it worth it? Just get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist, Rob. Sorry. I'm not going to repeat what's been said before. I'm going to add value. <laughs> I'm not going to take much time <laughs> and I'm going to integrate. This is what got me back to UniSA to study engineering. On top of the, the calibre of its academics like Simon and Don Cameron and others who I've been working with on research ever since. You, you never leave UniSA. It's, it's more like a, a club, isn't it? <laughs> no, research is fantastic for a self-professed, fully certifiable nerd, but anyway. Value adding. I'm not going to repeat the tree roots track along on the condensate. These are 10 year old Pyrus caloriana roots exposed directly beneath business as usual. If we continue to build impermeable footpaths on sand, we are going to get this every time if we have trees nearby. No question. Why would you do that? That's the solution. <laughs> Seriously, that's been the solution forever. Cut the tree out, fix the paving, do it again. That paving went down nine years before that photo was taken. Nine years. Most pavements, footpaths depreciated over 40 to 80, depending where you work. Nine years. Where's the value in that? 
The gravel's a root deterrent. You get fine roots growing up from the base when the conditions are good. Autumn, winter, spring. Gets too hot in summer. Gets too hot in summer above ground in Adelaide. But anyway, just here under the pavement, it's worse. And the roots die. No roots. Th those roots you can see there, the tree's been in the ground five years there. Those roots are a couple of months old. There's no aged, expanding, persistent root growth in the gravel whatsoever. Um, I've got other photos that show flecks of decaying root from last year. No, no roots more than two millimetres in the gravel. Nowhere near big enough to cause any problem. The 10-year-old porous calariana are under business as usual that you've just seen. This is same tree, same place, same age, directly next to permeable paving on a gravel base. The tree pit's 600 millimetres <coughs> wide. The tree trunk is now over 200. Directly abutting the stump, you've still got 200 mil clearance beneath the brick to the base of the gravel. It's over designed, we put in too much gravel. This is the first one we ever tested. To get it across the line, it was massively over designed. We now lay permeable paving on a 100 millimetre, 10 millimetre size gravel, no bedding layer, just straight onto the 10 millimetre, no problem. Deters the root growth. Not only does the gravel deter the root growth, Simon mentioned that the permeable paving allows the surface to dry out. We're actually using permeable paving to dry the soil out to manage roots. And it works because in the subgrade below the gravel, most of the roots under permeable paving are smaller near the surface. The thickening roots, the structural roots, the ones that the transmission pipes from, from broader distributing fine roots that do the absorbing are, are deeper in the soil. So permeable gives you a double method of protection, the gravel and deeper in the subgrade. You wash the soil away, you can see vertical root growth down and it tapers out under the gravel. You can have infrastructure right next to trees, no problem, no problem. If you don't do this, think of the liability of the trip hazards. Think of the extra cost. Uh, think of the pain and suffering and the medical bills and the admin covering all that. Just on the life cycle cost of permeable paving, avoiding this problem, they're good value. If you're not using it, you're ripping off your community. Use permeable paving, save problems. We've started in Mitcham using it as roads. No problem, let's put them down about 250 millimetre base. And oh, this example here, this intersection, it cost $30,000 more to use permeable paving than to use asphalt for that job. Goes off down the street a little way. How dare we use it? $30,000 more. It solved a flooding problem. That low-lying area used to flood a couple of times a year. The whole job had changed out of $200,000 and we had under drains soaking into a reserve nearby and the red guns love it. The alternative to upgrade the pits and run bigger pipe down to the, the main trunk, 1.2 million. So that job saved $1 million. <coughs> Value, it depends how big you look. If you're looking integrated, you've got to look big picture. That job saved $1 million. Um, Simon mentioned the paving at Kiama. This one, 20 years, 22 years after it was installed next to Norfolk Island Pines on a very rainy day, working perfectly. No problem. It works. Another view of the same thing. Uh, another example in Manly. Wonderful. This is on the second of two days in a row of nearly 100 millimetres rainfall a day. You should have seen the problems out on the impervious road. Th this is easy. It was chaos out on the asphalt. It was fun though. Anyway, integrate multi-disciplinary approach for the long term. It's good value. It's happening. Do it. Thanks. <laughs>